Hi, today we're going to be talking all about hysterectomy. I'm Dr. Jani Manoharan, laparoscopic surgeon, robotic surgeon, infertility specialist, obstetrician and gynecologist. Let's dive right into the topic. So what is a hysterectomy? A hysterectomy is a surgery done to remove your uterus. There are different ways in which it can be done and different types of hysterectomy. More on that later. First of all, let's discuss about why a hysterectomy is done. So some of the reasons for which your gynec can uh, suggest a hysterectomy to you is you can have masses in your uterus which may be causing pain for you or uh, this, it may be uh, you know, causing a swelling of your tummy and uh, there may, may be difficulty in passing urine and passing stools. You can also have heavy bleeding which is not responding to other modalities of treatment and the hysterectomy can also be suggested for other causes like cancer of the cervix and cancer of tubes or ovaries. And as for the types of hysterectomy, a hysterectomy is a total hysterectomy in which we remove the uterus, the neck of the womb and the cervix, the neck of the womb or the cervix and a subtotal hysterectomy in which the uterus alone is removed and the neck of the womb that is the cervix is left behind. If a subtotal hysterectomy is done for you, your gynecologist will be informing that uh, the cervix is left behind and you should be continuing to do, do screening for uh, cancer cervix. And there is also another type of hysterectomy in which we remove the uterus, the neck of the womb that is the cervix, the tubes and either one or both of the ovaries. This is called a hysteric uh, total hysterectomy along with salpingo oophorectomy. So which type of hysterectomy is done for you depends on the condition for which the hysterectomy is being suggested for you, your health condition and also the uh, factors like if you've had any previous surgeries and how difficult your present surgery is. As for the ways in which a hysterectomy can be performed, it can be performed either abdominally, vaginally or laparoscopically. So abdominally what we do is we make a cut on your tummy, uh, it can be a transverse cut or a vertical cut. The cut is usually about 10 to 12 cm in length and we will be doing going ahead with the surgery. And laparoscopically what we do is we put in a small camera into your tummy, we have a look at your entire tummy and we go ahead with the procedure. This will, you will have about uh, 3 to 4 cuts which is extending uh, about 1 to half a centimeter in length in your tummy. And vaginally what we do is we do the entire procedure through your vagina, it's similar to like how you're giving birth during your normal delivery. The type of hysterectomy that is going to be suggested for you depends again on the cause for which the hysterectomy is being suggested in the first place, your health parameters and also your previous surgical status. As for uh, the after effects of a hysterectomy. Uh, the after effects of hysterectomy as such, there is not much of an after effect though it is of course a very uh, emotionally and physically demanding procedure. Uh, so it would help if you have a lot of uh, support and the entire process is a little hassle free, it would help for your uh, uh, recovery as soon as possible. So as for the procedure in itself, uh, there are like I told you there are different ways in which we do the procedure. So the recovery also depends on the way the type of surgery that has been done for you as well as your prior health status before go getting into the surgery. And usually by and large what we expect of a patient is we would admit you the previous day in the hospital wherein we can have a full health checkup and see if your lungs and heart and other organs can withstand the stress of anesthesia and the surgery. And uh, the surgery in itself will generally take about one to one and a half hours again depending on the cause and your prior health status for which the hysterectomy is being done. As for the recovery after the surgery, uh, abdominal hysterectomy patients by and large uh, they do recover, they take about four to five weeks to recover and get back to their daily activities and uh, if you're having a laparoscopic hysterectomy because the cuts on your tummy is much lesser and the stress is much lesser, uh, people usually get, uh, on an average women do recover within uh, two weeks. And uh, also your stay in the hospital if you're having a laparoscopic surgery by and large we try to discharge the patient on the same day in itself or uh, at the max the next day but if you're having an abdominal or vaginal hysterectomy we'll expect for you to stay in the hospital for about two to three days. And going back to uh, many many women do ask me madam uh, when can I uh, get resume my sexual activity we usually t try to tell them to take it slow and uh, it takes about six to seven weeks for you to get back to your sexual activity. As for the stitches on the tummy, we generally by and large use absorbable stitches so you don't have to come back to the hospital to remove the stitches. These stitches either get absorbed in the body in itself or they kind of fall off in about uh, three to four weeks time. And we also do stitch, uh, have stitches in the vagina which to, uh, some patients do say that they see some stitches coming off. Don't worry, it's not nothing to get worried about. It's only the vagina healing. And post-surgery, some women do have a little bit of spotting for a few days, which is normal by and large, not to get worried. And some women do complain of having a gush of uh, bleeding after 10 days or so after the procedure, which also by and large is normal not to worry about. 
Now let's talk about the red flag signs for which you have to come back to the hospital after a surgery. So the red flag signs are if you develop a fever or if you develop any foul smelling discharge either from your wound on your tummy or from the vagina or you have heavy bleeding that you'll have to use uh, two three sanitary napkins and also uh, if you have problems passing urine and passing stools. So these are the red flag signs for which you have we would expect you to come back to the hospital and for us to have a look at the tummy and the vagina. And after the hysterectomy, if you have some spotting, we generally advise the patient to use sanitary napkins and try to avoid tampons, basically inserting in anything into the vagina that can harm and injure the vagina again. As for the anesthesia during the procedure, we either use general anesthesia wherein you put completely to sleep or we use regional anesthesia wherein only uh, waist down you will not have any feeling. The type of anesthesia again depends on the cause for which the hysterectomy is done and your prior health status. This would be decided by the anesthetist and they can have a discussion with you regarding the anesthesia before the surgery. And a recovery from the anesthesia, modern anesthetics are very uh, advanced and most of them do not have any after effects beyond 24 hours as such. The anesthesia will wear off by and large within 24 hours. If you're given general anesthesia, you will be drowsy and weary for the first 24 hours. We do suggest you not to drive or take important decisions and have someone with you during this first 24 hour period. After which you can get back and resume your normal life care after hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is a surgery done to remove your uterus and this can be suggested by your gynecologist to you for various reasons and I'm going to be talking about what you can do after a hysterectomy that is done. So before talking about what can be done after let's talk about what can be done before. So let's talk about the events that is leading up to your hysterectomy. Hysterectomy in itself is a stressful event that you're putting your body in, through. So what I do, usually do suggest my patients is to have a good uh, environmental, uh, to boost their environmental setup, to boost their mental setup, to boost their health setup, and also to boost up their medical setup. So coming to the environmental setup, I would suggest for you to have a very well equipped, uh, emotionally supportive uh, ecosystem. And coming to your uh, physical setup, I would suggest for my patients to be a little bit more physically active so that your muscles in your body can go through the stress of a surgery and coming to your uh, mental set setup I would uh, suggest for my patients to work on their anxiety issues so if you are someone with any other medical diseases like diabetes thyroid hypertension I would suggest for you to get uh, these corrected and uh, be up to the mark with your medicines and in control of your disease before going in for the surgery and as well to amp up your diet which is uh, to include uh, healthy iron rich foods so that the blood loss is not is compensated for during the surgery as for during the surgery uh, soon after the surgery when you are immobile for a few hours because of the anesthesia you can go ahead and start doing breathing exercises which will definitely help in bringing in more oxygen into your body and into your system to reduce the stress of the surgery as well and also to and as soon as you are out of the anesthesia which by and by and large it is within 24 hours I would suggest my patients to be mobile and active although it may be a little discomfortable and uh, painful but the earlier you start mobilizing yourself the faster your recovery will be so i would like for you to have that in mind and once you discharge from the hospital again take care of your diet make sure you have a healthy uh, fiber rich diet and also iron rich diet and also include a lot of uh, water in your diet so that uh, you don't have problems passing stools which uh, again would uh, reduce the amount of stress and which would uh, amp up the healing of the stitched tissues and also i would like my patients to start uh, doing small activities like you know taking going in for walks and all you can start that by uh, two to three weeks by and large depending on the type of surgery that's been done for you we would recommend for patients to abstain from uh, sexual activity for about four to six weeks after the surgery this is for giving your vagina some time to heal and recover and also avoid using tampons and other penetrative devices into your vagina for the same reason and also swim, exercises like swimming can be done after six weeks by and large so as for the side effects of hysterectomy uh, the purpose of the uterus in your body is just one that is to give birth so in case you're someone who's completed your family and the your symptoms warrant a hysterectomy uh, you can very well go ahead and get a hysterectomy done because with the advent and advancement of modern medicine there is no reason why you should get afraid of surgery uh, many uh, there are many myths saying that you know after removal of uh, the uterus you will not feel feminine enough 
or uh, you may have a lot of uh, pain but these are just myths like i say with the advancements of modern science and technology we never hesitate to use any other modern or uh, technological advancement in our homes and daily lives but why do we hesitate to use them uh, to better our health and our physical status it is just a myth and it's just a mental block and especially for women like i always say there is no reason why any woman should suffer from painful periods or a tummy pain or a heavy periods for that matter at any point of time in their lives especially with the advancement of science so if your doctor suggests a hysterectomy for you for whatever cause or reason it may be you can go ahead and get it done and you can very well enjoy the prime of your life after childbirth child rearing you finally have some time to yourself i would always suggest my patients to use their time to the maximum get rid of all these uh, physical parameters that is holding you back and go ahead and live your life to the fullest and uh, the recovery from hysterectomy it takes it depends on the type of hysterectomy that is done for you either abdominal laparoscopic or vaginal which would be suggested to you by your gynecologist and uh, by and large uh, by 2 to 3 months most women on an average get back to normal and they don't have any problems so uh, if suggested a hysterectomy you can very well go ahead and have one thank you for watching if you have any doubts please write down in the comments below book your surgery appointment on pristinecare.com Pristine Care